a very good morning to all i welcome you all for today's session relevance of humanities in the post covid world organized by the department of english ani hajira women's college trinalveli tamil nadu i begin with the words of shakespeare love all trust a few do wrong to none love all trust a few do wrong to none well it is a good day to be glad it's my duty to seek the blessings of the god to make this day a memorable one a negative thinker sees difficulty in every opportunity a positive thinker sees an opportunity in every difficulty such is the personality of our speaker the positive thinker dr munira t professor of english aligarh muslim university aligarh when we approach her to be the resource person for our webinar she readily accepted despite her busy schedule an expert in english and five indian languages like hindi urdu tamil gujarati and marathi dr munira is among us to give her insights on the relevance of humanities in the post covid world dear participants it's my immense pleasure to welcome our distinguished resource person professor dr munira ma'am i welcome you ma'am and waiting to hear you ma'am i can't change the direction of the wind but i can adjust my sails to always reach my destination says jimmy dean this is the motto of the triumvirs of our college i feel happy to welcome the triple pillar of our college Ahmed sir, our president; Engineer Kuda Muhammad sir, our secretary; and Haji Jafar Sadiq sir, our treasurer. They are very kind to treat us as they are family members, and always ready to encourage and support us in all our endeavors for the betterment of the students and the institution. I welcome you, sirs. Buddha says, "The distance between dream and reality." is action our principal madam dr raja fatima is such a dynamic and dedicated person to guide us in the right path dear participants at this juncture it is worth mentioning we had a management meeting with the principal on may 10 that is the day one the day one onwards our principal ma'am has madam, been dr. guiding raja us fatima to conduct weekly quiz webinars Yeah, participants. At this juncture, it is worth mentioning. We, we had a management meeting, meeting, meeting with the principal on May 10. That, that is the day one. The day one, day one, 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 one she has been guiding him to handle e-quiz, webinars, IQAC, FDP, international web series, a long list of programs that extend up to July 1st. Such is the untiring attitude of our principal. I welcome you, ma'am. Birds of feather flock together. It is a great pleasure for me to welcome my department colleagues, the Galaxy of Seven Stars, Mrs. Subhashini, Mrs. Valarmati, Mrs. Jasindal Mary, Mrs. Ponmulai, Mrs. Taj Bivi, and Mrs. Selva Anton. I should say we have we have. a like minded association a rare occurrence i welcome you my dear colleagues i am pleased to welcome all the heads of the department dr sabrin mone dr jayashri mrs anita mrs parvati mrs malathi and mrs aishan lofer and dr anurag and all the faculties of our college and our technical supporting friends mrs guma and mrs mumtaj dear participants you make us excited and happy with your overwhelming responses we got 180 responses from all the district of tamil nadu and 58 responses from the other states like kerala karnataka goa andhra pradesh telangana madhya pradesh odisha and gujarat and delhi by offering your support dear participants you encourage us to go ahead in our future endeavors thank you participants i quote the words of theodore roosevelt believe you can and you are half way there keep going everything will come to you at the perfect time with this positive thought i welcome you all once again 
and thank you joining us for today's webinar i hand over the mic to our principal ma'am thank you in the name of allah the most gracious and most merciful it's my privilege pleasure to offer my felicitations and a welcome on the conduct of this webinar hosted by the department of english dr munira t prabhsa the department of english women's college aligarh muslim university aligarh since 2018 has put in 17 years of teaching at graduate and postgraduate levels she has been a resource person for english at the english access micro scholarship program english proficiency course and at indira gandhi national open university center among the distinctions she has received she was a best cadet in ncc in kambato in 1989 with an a grade in c certificate examination she has attended various short term training courses in various program and attended the ugc refresher courses and orientation program she has been invited by the department of state united state to participate in the international visitor leadership program american language connecting english teacher and us language and culture and also associated with the ministry of social justice and empowerment government of india project on translation of dr b r ambedkar's writings she is a research guide wherein three scholars or awarded phd and five have registered under her guideship she has translated two stories from gujarati to english she has published articles in journals at national international conferences and symposium such is an eminence of today's speaker that we are very fortunate enough to have her in our midst to talk on relevance of human humanities in the post covid world i extend my hearty welcome to you madam on behalf of our management the staff of the department of english and and my own my congratulations are due to dr kala head of the department of english and all the staff members of the department for organizing this webinar i would like to place on record my heartfelt thanks to college management committee members engineer uh, our president dr uh, engineer sk said ahmed sahib our secretary engineer sk kuda mohammed sahib and our treasurer jafar salik sahib for all their encouragement given to us in all our endeavors my appreciation are also due to the staff of the department of computer science mrs buma and mrs mumtaz begum for their technical support thank you thank you once again Oh, to Dr. Munira. Uh, glorious uh, introduction. I don't know if it was me or if you were talking about somebody else. Thank you, Dr. Fatma, and good morning to one and all. It is a pleasure to be here with you here and talking about a subject that is so close to my heart, humanities. Um, it is also a pleasure because I am getting a chance to talk to. to you to academicians to students and yes that's what we do best isn't it talk um in this lockdown period you will all agree that when i'm saying that talking to our students our colleagues we're missing that the most and today when i'm talking to all of you it gives me immense pleasure uh thank you the management um for inviting me to address this uh, webinar and um, uh, let's begin and first of all let's talk about the huge opportunity that is in front of us today okay this pandemic that is all around us all of us are talking about it uh, it has thrown up a huge opportunity in terms of uh, how we've all become tech savvy you know we are all using technology i have so many of my senior colleagues here friends here who were even afraid of the computers and today they're all using computers they are taking classes online they are doing assessments online and they're talking about internet and wifi and zoom and google classrooms the vocabulary has changed so 
that has brought in a lot of opportunities along with it why do we need to talk about the humanities and the relevance of humanities post covid 19 we are in the covid 19 situation right now and we looking around us we look at all governments everybody talking about funding the sciences funding research for covid funding whatever can be done to fight this pandemic okay in terms of the sciences so what about the humanities when we are talking about humanities what about the arts what about the social sciences and that is what we are all a part of right okay so in fact in the past decade or so we have seen massive cuts in terms of funding for the humanities and so much of funding has gone towards the sciences and the math and science everybody is talking about them so what happens to the humanities okay uh this pandemic this this covid 19 has brought in one thing into focus and that is it has highlighted the fact that our priority today should be public education and of course public health why public education okay why should the government's priority be public funding public education okay funding education meaning funding research in social sciences in arts and other allied fields okay it is essential it is why is it essential it is essential to concentrate on public education because it is only then that we will have citizens who are better prepared in times of crisis okay who are better prepared at disaster management and this becomes essentially Uh, um, important especially especially for countries like us like india where we have such a huge young and vibrant workforce okay we need and we need to make this workforce productive and how are we going to do that uh, the only way forward is public education because private education is too expensive and our masses cannot cannot afford private education so therefore there has to be a lot of funding towards public education today all governments are focusing on applied sciences but it is actually the social sciences that give meaning to all sciences of course the pure sciences contribute towards the applied sciences but it is the social sciences it's the arts it's the humanities that give meaning to all sciences okay when it comes to structuring the society managing the society creating awareness or for that matter developing the faculty of critical thinking argumentation logical argumentation okay these can be done and solutions for a society and its well being can only happen through the social sciences we can look at things based on reason we can develop empathy and that's what arts social sciences leads you towards okay let's face it any person has many many aspects to him or her okay religion faith what do our, what what are our religious texts they are literatures they they teach you how to live in a society okay and they prepare you to understand people and society in fact all literature does that today people are reading kamu like never before literature of the past which talked about pandemics which talked about great disease it talked about disasters which talked about the great plague um or the spanish flu if you look at it in the 19 1918 these 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 texts the literature was written at that time they talk about how people faced these pandemics and how they overcame them how these texts give hope and therefore they become very relevant okay if you look at shakespeare today he is widely read okay this huge this huge indian population in terms of our youth who have no access to proper education and therefore do not have employability 
they need to be provided public health, public education. Why? Why? Why so much focus on public uh, education? Because that is what builds critical thinking, and critical thinking today is, I'm sure you will all agree, extremely, extremely essential. Okay, in today's day, particular particular narratives are being built, you know, particular narratives for whatever reasons, political agendas, for whatever end, they're being propagated en masse. We are looking at uh, uh, narratives about how the Chinese are the cause of the pandemic. We were looking at how uh, at the Jews and how then they were persecuted. Or let us look at our, our near uh, Within, within our boundaries, let us look at uh, the Jamaatis. That was a whole narrative built around how the Jamaatis, uh, for whatever reason, that they were the cause of COVID in India. Narratives, grand narratives, built and propagated. And if we didn't have an educated youth, there would be no critical thinking. There would be no questions asked. And uh, we would be led by the nose, of course. So a government may want to hide its failures by propagating um, certain certain narratives. Okay, many 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 unscientific ideas can be spread, and we know how how and and we've heard about them. We heard we've heard, we've we've seen them all, isn't it? People must look at these narratives. Critically, it is only the humanities that will help develop this critical thinking faculty in all of us. And it is very essential for our youth to be developing this critical faculty. In today's day, governments have found a way to collect data from us. They study our digital behavior. They collect all our data through various ways in, by telling us that it is going to be helping us you know, through various ways, they collect so much information about us. And then they do surveillance on us and quietly soft sell their products, their agendas, their ideas, their images. Okay, and all this is done in the name of helping us, in, in, the, help, in the name of protecting us, giving us security, saving us. And we, if we do not think about it, you understand what I'm trying to say, okay? And besides, people have started creating, rather living in bubbles, you know? The WhatsApp bubble, the Insta bubble, the Twitter bubble, and certain ideas only, we, we tend to only look at ideas that are being pushed to us through these mediums, through these bubbles, and we only share those ideas, only we talk about those ideas. Where do we look at other viewpoints? What what is the other what is the other viewpoint? Do we we close ourselves to a few that? Because that is how we are forced to think. That is how we are made to think. You look at your media. What is the media doing to us? They, they a particular narrative, and they're all talking about it. And we are made to believe only that. We are not allowed to see any other point. Only the social sciences that will help us to build critical thinking that will make us look at the other wide viewpoint, which is essential and important. Okay, and uh, in today's date, especially, it's very, very, very important to understand our people and our society. Okay. And it is the social sciences who will be required here. Knowing science is one thing, but having a scientific bent of mind is a totally different thing altogether. You can know, you don't need to know sciences to have a scientific bent of mind. If you look at Raja Ram Mohan Roy, what did he do for our country? Well, he changed the whole society. We have the example of our own, so Sayyid Ahmad Khan, not a scientist at all, a social scientist, but who brought about such a huge change in terms of the education system, in terms of uplifting the masses. So 
we have these great examples of people who are not at all scientists, but who changed society, who brought in a revolution, right? We are living in a globalized world today. There is so much of movement, movement in terms of population, okay? These are times of huge migration. People are moving for better opportunities to escape persecution, to whatever reasons for easy accessibility of so many things people are moving not just beyond their own states but beyond their own countries beyond their own continents there is movement okay it could be movement for whatever reasons okay there is there is then the world has become one small global village without boundaries okay if you look at technology the way we are sharing information technology today we couldn't have thought about it 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, no. Today, in a globalized world, anything and everything in terms of technology happening anywhere in the world is accessible to us within an instant, okay? And uh, if, of course, we look at ideas, an idea here, and it is all over within no time at all. Same goes with images. And most importantly, economy, finance, investment, Sitting here, I can invest in any part of the world. So there's so much transfer of money. But this has also brought in another very important issue. The issue of the stark difference between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots. Um, because globalization ultimately is a win for the capitalists. And therefore, the rich are becoming richer and poor, poorer. And because of technology, and this, this has been greatly highlighted, something that was hidden, this poverty, which was not showcased, has today come out into the open. You look at your, your TV every day. I mean, in your own country, watching all those poor migrant laborers walking thousands of miles, we didn't even think about it. But today, it's stuck in front of us. And that is one of the, 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 the fallouts of globalization. And we need, we need to address that. And who is going to address that? Science is not going to address that. That is going to be the work of the humanities. Uh, besides uh, the movement of capital, as I said, the movement of capital, the movement of technology, the movement of people, the movement of ideas, the movement of images. You must agree that globalization has also brought in the movement of disease. COVID is a fallout of globalization. I mean, and again here, the rich have moved. They are the ones who've traveled. They are the ones who've gone across countries, come back and brought the disease. And who is suffering? It's the poor who are suffering. They have no access to health care. They cannot afford health care. They do not have access to sanitization. They forget soap. They don't even have water. We know of so many places in our country where people are walking miles and miles and miles just to get a pot of water. Uh, we're talking about social distancing. How is it going to be possible for so how is social distancing going to be possible when we know that so so much of our population lives in a 10 by 10 room a room in which there are seven eight occupants what are we talking about and these these are the things that the social scientists will look at okay So every story that we are talking about, every everything grand that we are talking about, India shining, when we are talking about localization, when we are talking about new opportunities where we will have new startups and things like that. We look, we need to look at every story and the story behind that story. Okay, beyond the grand narrative that are built. We need to look at these smaller but largely significant issues. In fact, 
works of literature help in understanding these issues okay if you if you if you look at uh, how do you understand globalization and its effects you could look at arvind adigal's white tiger there are so many texts which talk about it or for example if you look at uh, this book by suman gupta which is called uh, globalization and literature or if you look at the routledge encyclopedia of globalization and literature you will see that it talks about globalization and the literature and its effects on globalization okay and how globalization and this whole process works okay so the arts and the social sciences have a very very significant role to play planning in these times of crisis will require social sciences and it is literature that will heal in such difficult times therefore the humanities are and will always remain relevant in any country in any society it is the social scientists who will do the planning who will tell how a society will need to be structured how it will need to be to move forward how things can be arranged therefore building a better society today everywhere that we look at every country if you look at the us which is supposed to be a superpower in the world has come down to its knees okay in, in spite of all the great all the great uh, uh, technology that we had all the great uh, infrastructure that we had they they, have, they failed at their planning and somewhere somehow that has created a huge i mean not even thousands we have lakhs of people dying out there if you look at the other countries of the world greatly developed countries in terms of healthcare if you look at britain if you look at your italy if you look at spain all these countries they had great health health management systems but they failed so what is it that will take us forward what is it that will become relevant for us we need to look at that okay and that is why i am coming back again to the main the relevance of the humanities how these humanities in this particularly difficult time that we are all facing i hope all of you are safe all of you are healthy all of you are doing well okay because we look at this pandemic this pandemic has brought in a lot of stress we have seen our loved ones being lost not just to the disease we have seen our loved ones being lost to stress uh, 14th of uh, june we lost a beloved we, i mean all of us i think are mourning the death of this great uh, sushant uh, singh rajput and i have lost two of my students to depression and this all this could have been saved could have been saved if there was good planning and therefore the great need for social sciences the great need for the humanities humanities were and will always be relevant when i went to the us in 2012 on the international visitor leadership program and we visited so many universities and schools and colleges in the us everybody complains about this everybody talked about how the department of state in the united states was cutting funds for the arts they were all concentrated on the sciences and today how has that helped how we know what the situation is and therefore in india in in our in our society it is very essential that the government looks at the humanities gives more funding to research they, so that our social sciences our artists our our academic academicians and social scientists do more research in fields where disasters can be managed better pandemic can be managed better life can be made better we have seen the kind of effect that this pandemic has brought on our lives we have seen how our poor population has suffered we have not just the poor we have seen our middle class society we have 
I have known so many of my students, so many of my friends who have lost jobs, who have taken great pay cuts, who have who have suffered and are still suffering and we don't know how long this is going to go on right so along with the great opportunities that have come in 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 the name of covid 19 there has come up this great issue this, this great need to understand our society to look at what we are doing wrong and how to correct it so that we are better prepared as citizens and we have all our citizens better prepared to manage a crisis of this kind if and whenever it comes and stands in front of us. Thank you for hearing me patiently. I would like to take up any questions that you have or any comments on whatever I have said. It will be a pleasure to hear you all. Mm, let thank, you, uh, thank you, ma'am. They'll be asking the question now. Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. I'm waiting anybody for any questions. I've opened the chat. So anybody who has any questions can just type their questions to me and I would be very glad to address them. Okay, fine. I'm waiting anybody for any questions. I've opened the chat. So anybody who has any questions can just type their questions to me and I would be very glad to address them. Yes. And there is one question from Al Balar Madi uh, okay. from our department. Why is the concept of social distancing largely misinterpreted in the present scenario? Come again. Why is the concept of social distancing largely yes. misinterpreted in the present scenario? Why is this whole concept of social dis distancing misinterpreted? Okay. Uh, again? Rather than misinterpreted. Why is this whole concept of social distancing misinterpreted? Okay. Uh, when we are talking about uh, 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 Dr. Fatima, there seems to be some problem because I am continuously hearing my own voice. Uh, now, now it's okay, ma'am. It's clear now. It's clear now? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So, uh, Social distancing being misinterpreted when we are talking about that, it's not actually misinterpreted. Uh, so what the government is doing is, is it has uh, put out norms, okay, for social distancing. It has asked everybody to. So, social distancing. The government has put up certain norms and it, it says that everybody has to follow them, okay? And they are for our own good because um, based on uh, WHO's uh, guidelines, uh, 
which are very clear, which says that within this particular social, this, with, within this one meter uh, distance, there is a possibility that anybody who coughs near you or sneezes near you can give you the infection. Okay, but a country like us with 130 crore population, 135 crores population, and no space to even move. I mean, how are we going to maintain that social distancing? And as I said, with such low education, how are our masses going to understand this whole concept of social distancing? Therefore, it's not misunderstood. It's just not understood at all. When I am walking down the streets outside, when I, I mean, you and I today, we we don't step out, okay? Well, may, unless it's very essential. I go out once in 10 or 12 days just to buy my groceries or fruits. And that also, I'm very careful. I come back, I wash myself, I have a bath and change all my clothes, put them all for wash and don't touch all those things that I've purchased and brought. I keep them out for four hours and then bring them into the house and all that. But what about the others who don't understand this? Who do not understand that whole concept at all? How are you going to maintain it? Therefore, it is misunderstood. Okay? Yes, anybody else? The questions are in the chat box, ma'am. Yes, I am reading them. Uh, Uh, yes, this question is, do you think modern education gives us the ab ability for such critical thinking? I'm sure it does. Don't you and I, don't you and I who have had modern education think critically? Yes. When we are looking at news channels, aren't we able to very easily say that this, this particular channel is sold out? I mean, it, it has been uh, some, some, some particular uh, political party has taken it over or somebody else is propagating a particular idea, don't we think critically? It has done that to us. Our modern education has taught us to do to think critically. And that is why this whole, everybody, I mean, if, if all our youth were educated, okay, they, they, would, they would definitely think critically. Right? Okay, there is another question. Recently, US imposing restrictions on H1 visas. Our IT professionals are affected. What is your view? My view on this, I really haven't thought much about this. I know uh, this restriction affects a lot of us because we have so many of our Indians who are there, who have so many of them who are there on work visas, who have not uh, got a residentship there and many of them uh, will be deported and so many of them if they don't get their h11 but then on the flip side if you look at it with all these people not getting h1 visas and staying here us will be the one which is in trouble you know they will require professionals and where will they go to if they can't bring in professionals to their country they will have to outsource and therefore somehow they will come to us only because the kind of uh, technically sound people that we have in our country. I, I mean, very few countries are like us. Of course, we do lack somewhere, somehow in our communication skills. And last time when I spoke about soft skills, and I, I know some of you were there on that uh, webinar of mine too, I spoke about how we Indians, we are just lacking in communication skills. Otherwise, we are on top of the world. Okay, so... What I think, my view is that ultimately the U.S. will have to come to us. They, they have no choice. Okay. Mm, then uh, a question from Satyapal. What about fear phobia which is developing among people due to our electronic media and due to our talk on pandemic? Good question. Yes, there is a lot of fear, isn't it? So much so that I have stopped watching TV these days. I mean, when it comes to my WhatsApp messages, anything that anybody writes about uh, the pandemic, anything that anybody writes about the COVID, I don't read it. And that I attribute to critical thinking because I know, okay, so much of it is trash. So much of it is information that I don't need to read about. 
and of course as you said on the electronic media on your televisions through the news channels there's so much of talk about the pandemic that it scares you to a great extent but i think you should you should use your logic you should use your mind and sift through pan through all that information that is being dumped at you you know it thrown at you and pull out what is relevant like like for instance you understand that the pandemic is here to stay you understand that since the lockdown has been lifted that uh, it is up to you now to take care of yourself it's up to you how you're going to conduct yourself how you're going to travel how you are going to maintain your social distancing how you're going to take care of your health it is all now up to you okay so it's, there's no need to be afraid there is only need to look at things very sensibly okay now there's another question uh, whether all these norms to prevent covid 19 will sustain even after invention of vaccines invention of vaccines is a difficult question uh, have we where are we in terms of finding the vaccine and even if a vaccine is developed how are we going to vaccinate the whole world isn't it so this this particular pandemic has taught us one thing that we will have to learn to defend for our, defend ourselves you know we'll have to learn to fend for ourselves we'll have to be better prepared and we'll have to be better uh, i mean more sensible citizens who will be able to manage our lives on our own and the la- ma- la- manage the lives of our loved ones and people around us also okay uh, so so even after after i don't know when this covid 19 is going to go away or if it is going to go away see we we had dengue we had sars we had mars we had all kinds of um, epidemics okay and we found vaccines for them but then they continue to be there isn't it in some form or the other they continue to be there we will have to learn to live with them to fight them to overcome them and to keep ourselves safe is there any other i hope i have answered your question if there's anything else if anybody else would like to ask okay from valarmati you spoke about the importance of education and critical thinking in combating social initiatives initiatives that lead us astray do you think modern education gives us that ability such critical thinking yes it definitely does it definitely does um your your education in the social sciences us i mean i am a student of literature um and i teach literature so i what is your literature your literature is a reflection of society is a reflection of life it tells you how people are living how people are reacting how people are doing things okay so when you learn about that you you start you start thinking like that you develop critical thinking modern education helps you to develop critical thinking and it's only with that that you will be able to combat anything anything wrong that is happening anywhere your education will and that is why the need to promote public education the need for everybody to be educated in mass we have a huge workforce our youth you saw them you saw the the poor youth you saw on the streets who were marching who were walking during the first lockdown and the second lockdown when you saw thousands and thousands of migrant laborers walking from the cities towards their villages who were there who were they young people isn't it young people so all these people if they were educated if they were given free fund free education free higher education they they would be our hope they would be there fighting along with us and creating a better society okay 
Okay, there's a question from Mudassar Bhatt. He says, as we see Corona has put the whole concept of life topsy-turvy on a positive note, has it set something positive for us to learn from it? Okay. Uh, yes, it has. It has taught us so many things. Uh, this Corona in, and this lockdown where we have been confined to a particular space has taught us the value of relationships. It has taught us the value of family. It has taught us the value of staying in touch, in communicating, in fighting together, staying together. And that is something positive that has come out of this uh, pandemic. OK? And we, have, we have started looking at things differently. We have started thinking out of the box because we have been put inside a box. We have been caged. And that cage has helped us to look at things differently. OK? Anyone else? Any other question? One more question from Santosh Patra. He's yes. asking whether, whether world community will raise voice over one type of expansion of China now. Uh, whether the world will raise uh, one type of expansionism of China now? Uh, that's world politics that we're talking about. Okay. And uh, I am not into political science, I'm into literature. But again, I think we will, we will all have to, we as citizens of the world will have to look at things and to understand beyond the narratives that are being thrown to us, we are throwing, thrown at us, we will have to look beyond them and see what is the actual truth, what is happening, and to decide for ourselves, you know, what the nations will do, how they will align, we really don't know. Today, when China is at our border, we, what the border situation that is there, we, we, we are hearing narratives about how China is caught, how China is um, trying to counter that whole uh, narrative of China being the cause of this pandemic. I mean, they, because they want to fight off that, that is why they suddenly become very aggressive. In the South Seas, in, in India, they become suddenly active. Yet they're doing all kinds of things because they want to change that narrative. So what the world is going to do, how the world is going to react to this, let's leave it to the political guys, yeah? Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yes. That's all, ma'am. I know there's more, no more questions. Okay. Right. So I, I would like to end on a happy note here, you know, because I have realized staying here at home and uh, working differently. I, I know it's been a very difficult time for me because I am a very, very people's person. I react well only when I see people, when I talk to people, when I'm in touch with people. My students are my life. I love teaching and that's why I'm in this profession. Right, so it has been a very, very good one more question from our own department, computer chemistry science, chemistry HOD. She's yes. asking, uh, ma'am, how to tackle the stress of children who are now continuously being exposed to online classes for four hours a day for a third standard child? Ah, <laughs> same, same, same here. I mean, I have my sister's daughter who's seven year old who's in the second standard, and every day, five hours of classes. I mean, and it's it's hell, believe me. Um, but again, I think children adapt. Okay, we 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 were in. Uh, if uh, Dr. Fatima, if you remember our childhood, we spent it more outdoors, isn't it? We were running on the streets and uh, are the kind of games that we played. Today, our children have become couch potatoes. They're totally into mobiles and video games and things like that. So the children of COVID. Will, will find ways to, to tackle their situation. Of course, they will find, initially it is difficult that they're being confined, that they can't go out, that they can't travel, but then they will learn, they will devise ways to keep themselves entertained.
isn't it and it's actually the parents we are stressed because we were so used to having our children going away from home and suddenly they're sitting on our heads and making our lives miserable but then it has uh, i mean it has made me a better cook it has made me a better organizer it has made my house a much more cleaner and neater place so i see all these as advantages of covid uh, on the lighter side yes and one more question from such uh, sadha rashi yes. what are the things or activities which we need to perform in order to come out of the traumatic phase of covid 19 how can we get the mental peace back how can we get a mental peace mental back? peace back okay heavy question there sajad uh, but from my personal experience i can tell you i have i have saved myself by catching up on all the reading that i couldn't do in all these years i was all the time studying 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 for teaching but suddenly now i do pleasure reading you know i've kind of pulled out all kinds of books all the movies that i couldn't see you know all the black and white movies of those days which i couldn't see suddenly i'm seeing them and in my friends list i have a huge list of friends whom i did uh, never talk to you know suddenly i find i have time every day to take out half an hour or one hour and get in touch with friends whom i've never spoken to yet yeah, day for yesterday i went to lucknow for a very important work and i met a friend whom i hadn't met in 40 years you see so these are the things that have come up my mother i see her all her friends she is pulling out collecting phone numbers from left right and center and she's talking to all kinds of people and it's amazing to watch her do that you know so that has happened and that that i think will help you know talking to each other reading and of course going back to nature that's another thing you know nature has suddenly become so beautiful gardening has become so beautiful so all these things sajad i think uh, will help you fight the fight the stress and uh, won't lead you to any depression god forbid and i'm sure we'll all come out of this covid very healthy and happy and positive and doing what such wonderful things yes I can't hear you Dr Fatima your mic is mute They say it's a very nice presentation okay. <laughs> and a delightful session okay and one more question again yes uh, ma'am in the lockdown period now global warming menens is diminishing alarmingly whether it is a blessing in disguise what is your view about it it is a blessing actually i mean when i go out on the roads there is no pollution i'm not coughing roads there there's less traffic it may be a, it is a very bad thing for businesses because all my whole family all my brothers my cousins they're all into business and they're all the businesses are all fat no like the bad the bad so which which we must look at but in terms of environment yes we uh, i saw those beautiful pictures about people from uh, chandigarh and ludhiana being able to see the mountains you know this snow snow cap mountain out of after say 70 80 years and things like that which is a beautiful thing uh, that's my take on it yes it is everything has a positive and a negative yes the nature has suddenly become beautiful the animals they have started living where they should be living we had all pushed them off into a corner and suddenly we see them walking the streets amazing sights yes and we we are humans after all we are going to go back to our bad ways once things become all right but i think we need to stop to think and here after become responsible citizens responsible towards nature responsible towards each other And therefore, make our lives beautiful. Thank you, thank you very much, ma'am. Over to Subhashini. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so respected and distinguished. Yes, ma'am. Can can can. Can. Respected and distinguished chief guest, respected principal, beloved head chody, and dear participant. Good afternoon to everyone. Showing gratitude is one of the simplest and yes, most powerful things human can do for each other. To express our gratitude, I would like to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of Department of English, Anne Hajira Women's College. First, I thank the Almighty God 
for showering his infinite blessings upon all of us and for making our effort a fruitful one. Next, I would like to express my hearty thanks to the resource person, Dr. Munirati, for sparing her most valuable time and grace this webinar. As said by Leo Tolstoy, just one candle lights the another and can light thousands of other candles. So one heart illuminates another, another heart, and can illuminate thousands of other hearts. True to the words, ma'am, you have illuminated us and enriched our minds with your knowledge and thoughts relevant to the current scenario. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to thank the management of our college, uh, Engineer SK Syed Ahmed President, Engineer SK Kuda, Ahmed, uh, Kuda Muhammad Sahib uh, Secretary, and Treasurer uh, Jafar Sadiq sir for their constant support and encouragement for all our NGO in our department. Thank you, sir. Now, next, I extend my heartfelt thanks to our multifaceted and dynamic principal, Dr. Rajat Fatima, for her encouragement and guidance for this webinar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to thank our enchanting and lovable HOD, Dr. Subama Lalai Skala, for her efforts to organize this webinar in an organized manner. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to thank our organizing committee members, Mrs. R. Valarmadi, Mrs. V. Jason Talberi, Ms. Ponmulai, Ms. Taj B. B. Tangamal, and Ms. Selva Anthony for their help and support for this webinar. Thank you so much, friends. And I would like to extend my thanks to our thoughtful thanks to our to the two young people from the Department of English, Mrs. Bhuma and Mrs. Mumtaz, for extending technical support from the beginning to the end of this webinar. Thank you so much, Madam. And last but not the least, I thank all the participants from various states who made this webinar a great success. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. It's over to Principal, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. You are most welcome. It was such a pleasure being here and uh, talking to everybody. As a teacher, you love to talk. And I have done what I have always loved to do. Yes. Thank you for putting me to Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that is what is a comment to keep on saying that this is a very great uh, discussion and very informative. And uh, they have been engaged with the uh, informative uh, information for the one full hour. This okay. is what they have given. So, so thank you very much. Oh, yeah, pleasure. I would like to thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.